स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे लेक्चर इन लास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग द हाइड्रोजन एटम प्रॉब्लम एंड इट्स क्वांटम मैकेनिकल सॉल्यूशन। वी वुड कंटिन्यू आवर डिस्कशन फ्रॉम वेयर वी लेफ्ट बट बिफोर दैट सिंस वी डिड अ लॉट ऑफ डेरिवेशन सो दैट फॉर इट इज इट वुड बी हेल्पफुल इफ वी गो थ्रू सम ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट्स दैट वी डिस्कस्ड इन आवर लास्ट फ्यू क्लासेस If you remember, we discussed the hydrogen atom where one electron is going around the nucleus. So therefore, we could write the Hamiltonian of the system as two kinetic energy operators, one corresponding to the nucleus, the other one corresponding to the electron, plus the potential energy of uh, interaction between the two. And when we are discussing the potential energy, we expressed is as the as a uh, Coulomb interaction. between the two charged particle that is the electron and the nucleus since we have this two body problem we separated we changed this two body problem to two effective one body problems where the first term represents the overall translational motion of the center of mass with a fictitious mass of mass of the nucleus and the mass of electron the second term that we see relates to the internal degree of freedom or the kinetic energy associated with the internal degree of freedom that is the distance between the electron and the nucleus to to get uh, this kinetic energy term and the potential energy term together they constitute the internal uh, hamiltonian of the uh, system in other words we also can express these two terms the first term since it is it involves the mass of nucleus and the mass of electron and the center of mass of the two body system and since the mass of nucleus for hydrogen atom is at least three orders of magnitude greater than the mass of the electron so therefore this center of mass movement is essentially dictated by the movement of the nucleus so the first term is the nuclear uh, degree of freedom or the the mo movement of the nucleus the second term which contains the reduced mass mu again for the same reason that the mass of electron is th at least three orders of magnitude less than the mass of nucleus the reduced mass will be dominated by the mass of the electron so therefore the second term becomes the kinetic energy associated with the electron and the third term is our potential energy so we started with this hamiltonian and we said that we can separate this hamilton this first term with this from the second and third term and we looked at the internal motion of the system so we started from this hamiltonian and we wrote down the schrodinger equation where this laplacian uh, is is the um, is expressed in in terms of spherical uh, coordinate where r is the radial part and this lambda square which is the legendrian function this depends on theta and phi the two angular coordinates of our system this is our hamiltonian for the kinetic energy part of the hamiltonian this is the potential energy and we wrote down the schrodinger equation when you look at the schrodinger equation we say that this wave function that we still do not know what it is should depend on r theta and phi variables because we see our operator having dependence on r theta and phi then other thing that we saw is that when i look carefully uh, at this operator i see there is only one term the lisenzian term which has theta and phi dependence the rest of the terms have r dependence so therefore i said that let us express this total wave function as product of two functions one is radial another is angular so essentially we did a variable separation technique so we expressed our total wave function as product of two functions one is the radial function another is angular function when we what what angular function could we take we see that this is lambda square operator which is closely related to l square the orbital angular momentum operator so therefore the angular functions that we should take can be the spherical harmonics they are simply that the eigen functions of l square operator once we 
use this variable separation, the, Hamil the Schrodinger equation gets simpli simplified. You see the action of this Legendrian operator on this wave function, which has r and y is, is uh, made and when the lambda square acts on this y function, we get this second term in this uh, potential energy. So, now we see that we have written down the Schrodinger equation, where this is the kinetic energy and this is effective potential energy. For the first term is the Coulomb, Coulombic interaction between the two and the second term is the centrifugal uh, force that arises when the electron goes around this nucleus in, in a fixed orbit. The orbital angular momentum of the electron generates the centrifugal force that keeps the electron from falling onto the, the nucleus. So, this effective Hamiltonian, uh, this effective potential energy operator we discussed uh, in, in our previous class. One other thing that you would notice here that here we have this u of r, we have where we have defined our u of r, where uh, in terms of the r, This is how we have defined, this is the r capital R is the radial function. When I multiply this small r, the coordinate with this r, we have defined this u function. Then we, what we have done is that we, we have introduced a dimensionless coordinate system rho, which is given as k r, where k is minus 2 mu e under square root h bar. And we have written down this differential equation of u of rho, where rho is the dimensionless coordinate. We needed to solve this differential equation. What we did after afterwards is that instead of solving this differential equation directly, we looked at its asymptotic solution. One, when r or the distance between the electron and the nucleus is very high, the other is when the distance and the electron becomes very, very small. So, from these two asymptotic solution, if you remember, we obtain these two function e to the power minus rho and rho to the power l plus 1. And then the, we introduce, let the, the main body of the solution be given by this v of rho, another function. So, we have two asymptotic so, uh, solution and the main body solution of the problem. What is in this function, these two quantities are known, but we still do not know this v of rho. So, therefore, we used, we applied this u of rho in this differential equation and wrote down another differential equation, but this time the differential equation is written in terms of v and not in, in terms of u, where we have introduced the uh, consequence of these two asymptotic part of the solutions into this equation. After that, so, this is the differential equation we had in terms of v. Now, we had to define what is our v and we defined our v as a power series expansion where b j are the sim simple simply the coefficients of different uh, orders of poly polynomials. So, you here j goes from 0 to infinite, where the function is b j rho to the power j. The advantage of expressing this function, the unknown function v rho as, as a power series expansion is that we have the freedom to choose where to truncate this series. If our function is extremely complicated, we can define that function or describe this function by going higher and higher value of j. And if our function is extremely simple, then perhaps we can, we will be able to ex explain it by truncating this series at some uh, smaller value of j. This way of defining the wave function gives us the freedom to describe diff functions of different uh, complexity. Once we have defined v of rho, then we have also defined the first derivative and the second derivative. You see, we, we obtained this because our differential equation has a second order term, a first order term and v of rho. Now, we, we can use these terms over here in this equation. When we do this, the 
outcome of this exercise would be this where we would be able to express b corresponding for j plus 1 in terms of b j. This relation is called recursion relation. The beauty of this relation is that from starting from b 0 for example, you if you know b 0 you can use this coefficient over here and obtain b 1 and since you know b 1 you can use this this coefficient to get b 2 and so on and so forth. Once you know the coefficients b 0, b 1, b 2, so therefore you can express your uh, v of rho the function and once you have expressed the v of rho you have the final radial solution of this hydrogen atom problem. We will now continue our discussion from this point. This is the recursion relation that we uh, had from the from the last uh, slide. Now you see we have shown that this every time I have a b j using this relation which is simply depends on j which is the index of our expansion L the orbital angular momentum which goes from a 0, 1, 2 so on so forth. Rho 0 is a is a quantity that we had defined in, an, uh, in our earlier class. So, if I know b j I can always obtain b j plus 1. This would look like that this series that we have defined as v of rho as uh, it would have infinite num number of terms. But now we would see whether we have any reason to see that this series should truncate somewhere or this series should stop somewhere. Suppose we would we consider a very large value of j where j goes to uh, infinite. In this case we can write b j plus 1 is proportional to. So, I have since j is very large this term I can write as 2 j since j is very large from than l and 1. So, I am writing it as 2 j and since j is very large. So, I would expect that this would also be uh, much greater than rho 0. So, I am writing only as j and here I would write j plus 1 multiplied by j where again j is very large compared to 12 and 2. This multiplied by b j. This when you would look at this would simply say you have 2 into j plus 1 b of j. In other words I can write b j as instead of writing 2 divided by j plus 1 I write 2 j minus 1. So, where j plus 1 is replaced by j and j is replaced by j minus 1. You see b j is expressed in terms of b j minus 1, but I know I can express b j minus 1 in terms of b j minus 2. How would I do that? So, I have this term 2, 2 over j and then where I see these two terms is equivalent to b j minus 1. I am simply using this uh, series. So, you would see now I can extend my discussion as to I can simply go on adding more and more terms until I reach b 0. Because you see my j minimum value is 0 and maximum value is not defined. So, I started with telling that let j be a very very large quantity. In that case I am obtaining this kind of expression. What I can simplify this further as you see I will have j number of terms here before b j b 0 and each term will have a 2. So, therefore, this term becomes 2 to the power j and here j into j minus 1 into j minus 2 and so on. So, therefore, this becomes the j factorial multiplied by b 0. So, this is happening when b j is very large. So, therefore, you would see v of rho if I apply this one over here j goes from 0 to infinite. So, I have 2 to the power j j factorial and I am writing this rho to the power j here 
multiplied by this constant v0. v0 is the unknown coefficient in this uh, power series expansion. So, this is a constant anyway, this is a coefficient. So, therefore, I, I am bringing it out and then I am simplifying this as when you look at this term, you would see from our uh, we, we know that we can write e to the power x as x to the sum uh, an infinite uh, series of sum of x to the power n divided by n factorial. And when you look at this term, this would suggest that the second term is b to b 0 into e to the power 2 rho, because I have x here as 2. Now, this is happening when I am going for very large value of j. If you notice this function carefully, you would see that I have this function e to the power 2 rho as as v. If you remember, we had defined u as a having a term as rho to the power l plus 1 e to the power minus rho and now we am seeing for very large value of j, v of rho becomes e to the power 2 rho. When I multiply these two terms, I get a term as e to the power rho and I have a problem with this type of term. Because if you remember when you were discussing the asymptotic solution of u of rho for large value of r, we saw that e to the power plus rho type of terms would diverge and therefore, we cannot have this kind of functions in our this type of term in our wave function. So, we had discarded e to the power rho term, but now if we look at this power series expansion, we have got this problem. So, we are for very large value of j, our wave function would become e to the power rho kind of function and this is un unacceptable for large value of rho. So, we must do something for this. What can we do about it? We see that such a problem occurs only when j is very large or j goes to infinite. So, that means this series, this power series should not go to j equals infinite, rather it should truncate somewhere. It should have some value at which this series should, this power series should, should truncate. Because I, ha I obtain this e to the power 2 rho term only when I define this, this uh, summation where it goes from n equals 0 to infinite. If I had a finite term over here, I would not be able to expre express this term as an e exponential function and then in that case I would not have this trouble. So, therefore, to avoid this trouble, I say that this series must truncate somewhere. What do I mean by that? It simply means, it simply means that there has to be some maximum value of j, let us call that as j max, for which since this is the maximum value of j for which b, b j max plus 1 should become 0. If b j max plus 1 becomes plus 1 becomes 0, that means this coefficient which is the coefficient of rho j max plus rho to the power j max plus 1, when this coefficient becomes 0, that means that, that the power series would start truncating. Once I have j max plus 1 coefficient is 0, then j max plus 2, j max plus 3 and so on all these coefficients will become 0. So, therefore, I have the power series will now be uh, not, not an infinite series rather, rather a finite series. So, now what would we see would we require that what would be then this value of j max? What would be the ma maximum value of j where this power series, power series should truncate? I have this expression for b j plus 1. Suppose, let us say that I, I want to write this for j equals j max. When I write this, I would see that in the left hand side, the b j max plus 1 will become 0 and that will happen when I look at the left hand, uh, right hand side of this expression. This would be true only when I have plus a. When this condition is satisfied, 
then v of j max plus 1 will become 0 and my power series will start truncating or I will I'll, I'll have only finite number of terms in my power series expansion. Now, let us look at this term carefully. j max is going to be an integer integer because it goes for as j max is the maximum value of j where j goes from 0, 1, 2 and so on so forth. L is the orbital angular momentum of a particle moving around. So, its values are all integer. So, L goes. So, here j max can have 0, 1, 2 so on so forth. L again goes as 0, 1, 2 so on so forth. So, this quantity in the left hand side is, is an going to be an integer. So, j max is an integer, l is an integer, 1 is an integer. So, the sum of the 3 would be an integer and let us call this as a new integer n, where n is defined as j max plus l plus 1. So, since you know that j max and l starts from 0, so therefore, n the new integer would start from 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth n equals 0 is not allowed because this is this term has a plus 1 over here and l and j max can mean uh, their lowest possible value is 0. So, therefore, the lowest possible value of n is 1 and not 0. Now, we have this new condition is that the series will truncate when rho 0 is equal to 2 n. Now, let us see what is our rho 0 we had defined this rho 0 as mu which is the reduced mass of the system. In other words, which since it is reduced mass of electron and nucleus. So, reduced mass of this two body system is, is going to be um, nearly equal to the mass of the electron. E the charge of the electron, Z is the nuclear charge, 2 pi epsilon 0 uh, comes from the uh, permittivity uh, which, which is a term in the uh, Coulombic interaction. Uh, and you have h bar square and k which we defined as square under square root of minus 2 mu e divided by h bar. I will rewrite this rho 0 in a slightly different way. It is all the terms over here. I simply took out z the nuclear charge and k outside and I kept the rest of the terms over here. You see uh, please notice here 2 pi epsilon 0 has become 4 pi epsilon 0 because I have it mul 2 multiplied over here. So, when you look at this, the, this, these terms, you see all these are constants. The mass of the electron 4 pi epsilon 0, charge of electron h bar square, all of them are con constant. When you determine their value, you would actually find this one would turn out to be, we will define, we will give a small name to this one which is 1 over a. where a value is 0 0.529 angstrom and it this also has a popular name this is this is known as the Bohr's radius. So, our rho 0 is expressed as 1 over a to z by k, but now we say that rho 0 should be equal to 2 n. So, we would now use both the information to see that uh, 2z by a 1 over k is 2n. So, therefore, k is 2 to cancel out z divided by a n and what is k? k is minus 2 mu e under square root divided by h bar equals z by a n and then I take square of both the term, uh, both sides. Then I have e equals minus h square h bar square divided by 2 mu a square z square divided by n square. Now, I see that I have this energy or e which is given as minus h bar square divided by 2 mu a square and which is which is again a constant. If you see the a the Bohr's radius is, is a constant h bar square by 2 mu is also another constant. So, therefore, let us give another name 
E0 to this new constant multiplied by z square by n square, where E0 the value of E0 is 13.6 electron volt. Now, what I see is that I have this energy values of the hydrogen atom which is equal to minus of E0 which is a constant here multiplied by z square, z is the nuclear charge in case of hydrogen atom it is it is 1 and divided by n square. What is this n now? We defined n because we had to truncate this series somewhere and we have defined n as z max plus l plus 1 and whose values are can be 1, 2, 3 so on and so forth. So, now we see that this energy E actually for a particular system where the nuclear charge is defined this energy E is simply So, this is my energy value. Now, for hydrogen atom where z is equal to 1, if you put z equals 1, then, then you would see the lowest value. So, here the energies are for n equals 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth. For hydrogen atom when z equals 1, so I have got only this term minus 13.6 electron volt lowest energy is obtained when n is equal to 1 and that value is simply minus 13.6 electron volt. That is the lowest energy of hydrogen atom. What is the next energy level? Next energy level I will get when I will apply n equals 2. When n equals 2, then you see this is minus 13.6 divided by 4 and by using higher and higher values of n, I can determine the higher energy levels of hydrogen atom. So, in today's lecture, we uh, had a review of the steps that we took to solve the quantum mechanical problem of hydrogen atom and then we have now come to a position where we have written down the Eigen values of the hydrogen atom problem and by then by that we have now an idea about how the energy of this hydrogen atoms looks like and we would continue our discussion from here in the next class. Thank you for your attention.